Now, we've defined managerial economics. We're going to talk in terms of our learning objectives, so define managerial economics. We're going to cite some important types of resource allocation problems. We'll talk about that. We're going to illustrate how economic changes affect a firm's ability to uh, earn an acceptable return. Now, I think this, this question here is really an interesting one. And this is one of the things that, so when we talk about what do I hope you think about uh, uh, years and months uh, uh, down the road after having taken this course, this, is, this one here is truly an interesting area. I, and it talks about, uh, it, to me at least, it really addresses the, the, the question of, okay, how do I get a successful business going? But then how do I sustain that success or sustain profitability? And then how do I sustain it over longer periods of time? And so I think for most people who are in business, they're not trying to come in and skim off the market, be in business a couple of months, and, and leave. So this issue here that you see, okay, uh, this is attaining and sustainability. This is truly a, a very important question. It's one of the key, for me, key learning objectives of how do you integrate what we have learned in, mi in microeconomics, what we've learned from statistics, and how do you integrate that with your managerial skills to, in, in effect, achieve a sustainable com company over very long periods uh, of time that adapts to economic and social and uh, political changes. And then we're going to look at this question of um, the three basic questions faced by uh, any country. We'll talk about what those are. Uh, momentarily. Let me see if it's going to do that. Oh, maybe not. Um, what did I do? Let's see. Okay, here we go. Now, let's talk about economics first. Um, it's the study of the behavior of human beings. Um, and that's what I think is interesting. And I would really put in another word here which I think is very interesting. And let me see if I can, all right, let me come back up here. But this is the word that I think is important. Okay, oops, put my little E, that didn't do it. Choice, okay? Economics is about choice. Now, it's more than just about producing, it's more than just about distribution, and it's more than just about consuming material goods. It is about the choices involved in producing, the choices involved in the distribution of things, and the choices involved in consuming material goods. So choice is the key concept here. Very important to us. And it's about choices that we're getting ready to make, not about choices that we have already made. So this is one of the things that, again, as you start thinking like an economist, choices that I have already made have, <laughs> it sounds silly, but they've already been made. As an economist and as a good managerial economist, what I'm concerned now with is the choices that I'm getting ready to make. There's an old saying in English, and I'm sure in Chinese you have something comparable, but the way it works in English is don't cry over spilled milk. Now what that means is you've spilled the milk. Don't cry over it. All the cost, all the damage is already done. What you need to understand is don't spill it again in the future. So this is the thing that's important about economics is that choice for us and the definition and the issues that we're concerned with is choices that we're getting ready to be made. Now, here's another problem that we have to pay attention to as we think about choice, we have to ask two questions here, and we'll come back to this later. But there's two questions that we have to think about in terms of choice. Question number one, well, do things happen to us in the world in a completely random fashion, or are things completely determined by some other factors that we have no control over? So in one case, things are random. If things truly are random, then why worry about choice? It's just going to be whatever happens to you. Or if everything is so predetermined, you also have no choice. Does every, I think you can see in that context, studying economics or being worried about choice wouldn't make any sense. 
But I think most of us around the world believe that our lives unfold in a certain way that our behavior, to a certain extent, can be controlled by the decisions, by the choices we make. And so that's the key issue here. We do believe that, and most of us believe in many ways choices are under our control, and therefore there's purpose to our decision making. And let's just start out right now by saying, okay, and there's debate about this and we'll bring it up all during our time together, but the debate is purpose. What is the purpose? Well, let's just agree right now that we're going to say two purposes. For the individual person, and it, this has a lot of appeal to it, for the individual purpose, person, the purpose is simply to make themselves better off. Now, there's a lot of issues here, and what do we mean social versus individual? And this is the difference between a capitalist economy and other types of economies, but in a capitalist economy, it is the individual choice of the person. Okay? So that's what we mean by being made better off. doesn't mean we don't have social goals or collective goals and objectives. Okay? So the choice of the individual is purposeful. The purpose is to make themselves better off. However, okay, this is an interesting challenge also. And this, I think, applies regardless of what type of an economy you're in. Choices are always constrained by something. Okay? Now, what do we think those constraints are? Well, there are three types of constraints that are on imposed on us by, uh, as individuals. Okay, what are they? First, what I would say are political constraints. All of our political systems, however defined, okay, impose restrictions on the choices we can make. All right? You may indeed want to own, um, let's say, a rocket yourself to shoot something into space, but most governments don't allow private individuals to own uh, nuclear weapons or something along those lines. So our political systems impose constraints on us. Second, our moral and cultural systems also impose constraints on us. Okay? But the difficulty with these sort of political constraints and these sort of moral cultural constraints as an economist and as a manager, I see the result of them. Okay? But I don't know how to measure them. How do you measure a moral constraint? Remember, you can measure the outcome, but you can't actually measure the constraint. I can talk about political restrictions that every society places on in citizenry, but how do I measure that? All right? So that leads us to the third constraint, which as an economist I pay the most attention to, and then that is what we call an income constraint. Okay? Income. Now we're going to come back to this from time to time, but here's the idea. Economics is about choice. It's about purposeful choice, choice that we believe either makes the individual or the society better off, but now there are constraints. Okay, so this is really the challenge for us as managers. We as managers understand, and this is how government impinges on us as managers, the moral and cultural system impinges on us as managers. We do indeed realize that those constrain our choices. Okay? But as an economist and as a manager, what I'm primarily then interested in are income and cost constraints. Those are the things that I can measure. Those are the things that I can definitely see how they impinge my ability to make a decision as a manager.